let's curl my hair and talk about cancer because that sounds like just what you want to hear i want to bring awareness so watch this video if you're a pcos girly i'm kendall i'm 30 years old i was diagnosed with cancer when i was 29 i am now cancer free as i know it i made a ton of videos when i was diagnosed to take you through the journey to raise awareness for young pcos girlies like myself there's four main questions that i gathered from the videos that i wanted to answer so if you have more questions after watching this please feel free to ask in the comments and i'll do my best to respond the first one i had was what kind of cancer did i have i had endometrial cancer which your endometrium is the lining inside of your uterus so it's also known as uterine cancer and uh, another way of saying that is endometrioid adenocarcinoma mine was stage 1a but it was grade 2 the other question was your biopsy didn't show cancer but your hysteroscopy did so yes that is correct and it is terrifying they didn't just do one biopsy they did three biopsies on me all three came back with complex hyperplasia nothing said cancer in my biopsies if you get a negative biopsy and you still feel in your heart of hearts that something's not right and your provider's not advocating for you advocate for yourself that's my pep talk what were my signs and symptoms this was an ongoing thing for pretty much my entire adult life i'm a pcos girly i'm overweight I've seen more than a handful of doctors for so many issues. I've had infertility. I've had years of not bleeding, years of bleeding. I've had just so much back and forth. He said, she said, um, PCOS, and that I had it, that I didn't have it. Always been told just to lose weight, you know, the typical go-to for doctors that don't know what they're doing. My initial symptoms when I first was diagnosed with PCOS was just irregular periods. I think I went like a year and a half with no period at all. Then infertility and just could not get pregnant for the last i'd say probably three to four years before i was diagnosed i would bleed almost every day so that was kind of the red flag was just the bleeding all the time i don't know a couple months before i was diagnosed the pain was awful absolutely horrendous i had to miss work i couldn't eat i couldn't sleep I was nauseous. I was lightheaded because I was losing so much blood. I had a heating pad on my pelvic area. I was sitting on one and I had one on my back. I had to curl up in a ball on my bed and just cry in pain. It was awful. I just said, I can't do this anymore. Something is wrong. Those are my symptoms. Uh, there's a lot more little symptoms that I definitely had, but those are the big ones. And then how did it get diagnosed? I was diagnosed because I went to my doctor and I said I've had enough. I told her my symptoms and she ran labs. Those all came back okay. And then she did a pelvic ultrasound. And when she did the pelvic ultrasound, she saw that my lining was way too thick and asked me to come back for a biopsy. She didn't just do one biopsy. She did three biopsies and none of them showed cancer. And so she was like, this still just doesn't look right. My uterine lining was 34 millimeters, you guys. 34 that's seven times thicker than it ever should be seven times and the scary thing is i had a pelvic ultrasound that showed really thick lining in 2018 and they just told me that everything was normal no concerns no issues so that's terrifying as well it was like this just doesn't look right we just want to make sure that it's not something else so they did a dnc hysteroscopy surgery where they go in with a scope check it out and then they remove all the lining they send all the tissue not just a biopsy sample the entire amount that's in there off to pathology to be tested and that's when i was diagnosed with endometrial cancer i am more than happy to answer any question anyone has if you have any signs or symptoms that are alarming you guys to have this kind of cancer in my age i was 29 when i was diagnosed the chances of having that is like 0.4 or 4 percent it's very low it's so low that there's not even cancer research that tells oncologists how to handle this cancer for treatment purposes in someone so young i had to have a full-blown hysterectomy and haven't had kids yet i want to raise awareness i think with pcos we're only going to see this kind of cancer more prevalently in the population 